Good afternoon. My name is Liliana Rodriguez, and today I have a wonderful presentation set up for you today about the development and discovery of hormonal birth control. Now, we all know a little bit about birth control, and many of us probably use it on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> um, but back in the 1950s, this was a completely different story. The idea of women as we see it today was very much different back in the 1950s. We had more of a, of a nuclear model of women where we were, uh, as society saw it, we were meant to be at the, at the home, taking care of the husband, taking care of the kids, um, cleaning the house, cooking. Um, there was no real, there was no real force driving women to become more educated and become professionals. There was this idea that that's what women were here for. That was their job. And with this idea also came the restrictions of their own sexuality. And this was the view both religiously and politically at the time. It was believed that contraceptives would make women more promiscuous and more prone to sinning. And there were even laws that were put into place to prevent the distribution and information of contraceptives to women. And these were called the McCormick laws or the, sorry, the, the Comstock laws, excuse me, the Comstock laws were put into place to restrict, even doctors restrict giving women contraceptives and even information about contraceptives. Um, oh, of course it was different in every state, but just the fact that the laws were there was awful. Nobody had any access to anything, and so women were subjected to up to three decades of fertility up until they reached menopause. Now this of course caused many pregnancies, many miscarriages, and of course damage to the body. And a woman named Margaret Sanger wanted to change this all. She wanted a contraceptive that was in the hands of the woman in her control because at the time the contraceptives that we had were either too expensive they were ineffective or they were in the hands of the man and when we were talking about that we were talking about condoms which even even then weren't that well developed and her dream her lifetime goal was to create the pill something that would be easy, something that would be small, and most of all, cost-effective. And most of her life, unfortunately, was spent fighting these Comstock laws, um, which she was winning for the most part, but she wasn't really achieving that goal that she was going for. Until the age of 72, where she met a man named Gregory Pincus, and Gregory was a professional in medicine, and, and his specialty was human reproduction. And Gregory told her that if he got the grant to do it, that he would take on the challenge of making this magical pill. And having already established the first Plant Parenthood, Planned Parenthood in Boston, Margaret Sanger had the power to give him a small grant to start off with. And so with this money that he had received, Gregory Pincus went to a, a pharmaceutical company called S.D. Sealy. And he went there with the idea already that a drug called progesterone would be essential in the development of this magical pill. And 
what he did was he tested it on mice to see what the effects were. And what he found was that um, these mice, after having taken the progesterone into their systems, had stopped ovulating. And with this information, he then brought it to Margaret Sanger. And with this new discovery, she convinced a rich heiress named Catherine McCormick to give him the $40,000, which was a very large sum at the time, that he needed to do the human test studies. And what we found after he did these test studies um, on the lowdown, of course, they were masked as fertility studies. What we found that was that this drug progesterone was very effective in stopping ovulation. Now today, we know more about how that works. There's a gland in your brain called the pituitary gland or the master gland, and it controls among the hormones involved in the reproductive system, it also controls other endocrine glands. Now, the two important ones that are in the female reproductive system are LH and LSH. After menstruation, these two hormones are released from the pituitary gland and they travel down to the ovaries. This is a signal to the ovaries to start developing an egg and release it into the fallopian tubes to be fertilized. Now, after the egg is, is released and there is no fertilization, menstruation happens and the ovaries send another hormone called estrogen back up to the pituitary gland to stop these hormones from coming. After that, the cycle starts over again. Now what we found with this progesterone drug was that it actually stopped these two hormones from developing and being released from the pituitary gland. And without those two hormones, there is nothing to tell the ovaries to start making egg and releasing it. And this is what's, what, had, what we found when we tested it on humans. This is the process that was stopped and we found that it was effective as a contraceptive. And due to, to this discovery, we have found a new revolutionary way to look at contraceptives. We found a way to give women the freedom that they needed the freedom to choose whether they wanted children or not. And today, we see that in places like Planned Parenthood, something funded, founded by Margaret Sanger, and we, see, we now know that it's, it's very important in controlling population and making the decisions to have a family. And we can all give thanks more to her contribution of and her passion for working toward this goal. Fuck, eight minutes? It